Good coffee this morning. Are you serious? <clears throat> Are you serious? Iran is now claiming it can defeat the United States of America in any scenario. At least that's what the Revolutionary Guards commander says. Endangered U.S. should find a way to survive, claiming Iran has led to American failure. Iran's Revolutionary Guard Commander Major General Mohammed Ali Jafari claimed uh, this morning that Iran can defeat the United States in any scenario. Uh, at a convention in Tehran, Iran, Jafari boasted, quote, we have grown so much more powerful that we don't feel concerned about the enemy's <clears throat> unwise attitude. We can go past any enemy's scenario. And this has been proved in our contemporary history, according to the semi-official FARS news agency. Now, clarifying which enemy he was referring to, Jafari said, the U.S., should find a way to survive and to continue to its endangered life. But we are surprised at the enemy's insistence on costly and useless scenarios in reference to the sanctions that are being imposed on Iran. Now, a day earlier at a meeting at the Assembly of Experts that elected the Ayatollah Ala Khomeini, uh, excuse me, the Ayatollah Mohammed Yazidi as its new chairman on Tuesday morning, Jafari made the claim that the United States had created the Islamic State uh, or ISIS terrorist group to counter Iran's expanding influence in the region, which it is exercising. And we know it's true that Iran is expanding because Iran right now controls Hezbollah. They fund Hezbollah. They supply Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. They supply, support, defend, and even fight alongside President Assad's army in Syria. They are completely funding, supplying with rockets and bombs and everything else, Hamas in Gaza. And they've recently just helped by supplying arms and supplies and weaponry. They've helped the Islamic Houthis overthrow the government of Yemen. Now, that's four countries that Iran has indirectly or directly completely controlled besides Iran. So that is true. The question is, did the United States of America create ISIS? Well, I don't believe they did. I want to pray to God in my heart that it did. That the United States did not create ISIS intention, intentionally. But um, it seems as if the United States certainly, by withdrawing from Iraq and telling everyone in the world when we were leaving, and then when we left, left no base, didn't put all the equipment into one base and have at least 10,000 soldiers there to make sure that to keep peace. But instead, we completely left, but we left tanks, armored vehicles, Toyota Tundras, supplies, weapons, guns, ammunition, rocket, rocket launchers, everything that would fund an army. We left it in the sand. Now, the Iraqi... Maliki and his soldiers and his army was supposed to pick it up and run with it. That, at least, is what the United States' report is. And half of it was supposed to be distributed to the Kurds so they could defend themselves. At least, that's what Maliki said. But the Kurds never got theirs, and Maliki's forces never went and picked it up. Instead, ISIS did. And how did they form so quickly? It's because they were already formed. They were just waiting for the guns to use. So you can understand there's a lot of skeletons in a lot of closets right now. And what do we get for it? 
of madness in the Middle East. And Christians are being beheaded and crucified, raped and executed, murdered for the cause of Jesus Christ. That's what's going on, and that was prophesied to happen in your Bible. I was on the phone last night with a man in way up there near Anchorage, Alaska, and he said it was 39 below zero windshield up there yesterday, and I'm like, what? Because we actually had a spring-like day here, 57 degrees, sun shining, birds chirping. I thought that <laughs> it's a little colder out there this morning, but but anyway, he and I were having a conversation last night, and uh, we were talking about several different things. But he uh, he said to me, you know, he goes, you know, for years we've heard it preached that the body of Christ would be gone before there'd be beheadings, Christians being crucified or beheaded and all that. And here we are. And Christians are being murdered everywhere. And yet we're here. Well, my answer is yes, we are. And uh, it does say great persecution will come. It's right here in Matthew 24. And even Paul told us, them that live godly shall suffer persecution. The problem is the American church thought that meant getting talked about at the ladies' aid meeting. Persecution, folks, when they run you out of your home, when they crucify your brothers and sisters on crosses, when they behead your brother and sisters in Christ and put their heads on fence post. When they murder little children who won't give up Jesus Christ. When they burn the churches, rape the women and make them jihadi brides. That is what persecution is. And this is just the beginning of sorrows according to Jesus. Should we take his word? I think I will. Um, and here's what it says in Matthew 24 quickly. And, he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, or plagues, or diseases, earthquakes in divers places, and all of these are the beginning of sorrow. Verse 9 then says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And then he goes on to talk about the desolation, the abomination of desolation. And then starts talking about two, two will be in the field, one to be taken, one to be left, okay? But before you even get down into this, you've got what we're facing now, the beginning of sorrows. And that's that's really it. And so I think what we do is we have, to, we have to be stronger as a Christian community, as a church, as a body of believers, as a bride of Christ. And we know we are looking, lifting up our heads, and we're looking for the blessed hope. But we're here on the earth and the confrontations. And I think that the Reverend Franklin Graham said, American Christians start preparing for persecution. And he's not talking about somebody trashing you on Facebook. He's talking about what's happening now to your brothers and sisters in Christ in the Middle East. Whether you claim your Coptic Christians or your Orthodox Christian brothers and sisters as your part of the body, I think you're going to have to, as Christians, you got to stop the bickering, stop the fighting, infighting, stop the name calling, stop the arguing over doctrines, and understand that we have to unite as the body of Christ. No, we don't see everything eye to eye. No, we have differences, definitely. 
but your enemy is not your brother or sister. Your enemy is the devil, the roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Church, seriously, this is not a message now for the weak and anemic spiritually. This is a message for those of you who understand that we are living in the last days. Pastors, knock the dust off your Bibles and start preaching from the pulpits of your congregations on the end times because the end times are here. And if you don't, well, don't worry. The people will finally get tired of your fluffy, puffy message and they will start to find men and women of God who will tell them exactly what's taking place. Are you saved? It's time to get right with God. The apocalyptic signs are everywhere and we're living in the last days.